Hello, friends, and welcome to Empower YouTube Podcast. I'm your host, Natasha Paris, and I'm excited because you are in the building with me. You can be anywhere in the world, but you have chosen to be here with me, and I am so humbled and appreciative. Let me tell you about this show. Each and every single week, we continue to empower you to greatness that is truly going to help you, whether you are a person that have experienced a heartbreak, have gone through a divorce, or have endured levels of trauma of any kind, or you're just a person trying to rebuild their life and themselves, and now you are finally ready to live a life full of abundance, joy, and peace, then this show is for you. So with that said, thank you again for being here. I am extremely grateful. I'm excited to be on this journey with you because together we are empowered for greatness. You ready? Let's go. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Empower You 2 podcast. I am your host, Natasha Paris, the empowerment strategist and the licensed mental health therapist expert. And I am so excited to come before you because it is the amazing holiday season. And this episode, episode 50, is so super amazing. We're at episode 50 towards the tail end of the year, actually the end of the year. Yes. Yes. Fantastic. So wherever you are in the world, I am wishing you happy holidays and a happy new year. If you are listening to this and it's the summertime, I want you to embrace this episode even more. Why? Because in episode 50, we are going to talk about it. But before we jump into that, I want you to go to your favorite platform and hit the five star button. And I want you to leave a comment, some feedback, what resonated for you. Because here on this podcast, we read all of the comments In addition to that, we want to hear from you. So absolutely, please also second, share, share, share. If this resonated with you, sharing is caring. Share it with at least three people that you believe could benefit from this. Well, on actuality, you never know who could benefit from it. So share it, share it, share it, because it is important to help renew and support individuals, especially in their mindset. And that's exactly what I do as a mental health therapist expert. So with that said, let's talk about it. Let's jump right into this episode 50. And the title is how to walk into a new year with a major positive mindset, how to walk into the new year. So what we know is that New Year's bring about optimism oftentimes, but one I would like to talk about is what we know is that approaching a new year with a positive and open mindset can be very beneficial, my friends, very beneficial, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right into it and I'm going to talk about some strategies that you should have for approaching a new year. That in itself is something that is timeless, that is extremely timeless. Because what we know, right, for New Year's, oftentimes people are like, New Year, New Me, right, New You, all of that great stuff. But oftentimes people by the 15th, usually sometimes earlier of January, they tend to forget all of the things that they've decided to work on, decided to do, and um, and they go back to their regular default mechanism of doing the same thing. But unfortunately, or sometimes, I, well, truly unfortunately, they are looking for things to change, even though they have not changed, right? Looking to do the same thing, but expecting different results. And what does Albert Einstein say that is called? 
madness, insanity, right? And so we're going to talk about some strategies for approaching a new year. But I want you to know that you having the mindset to change and reset your your physical health, your spiritual health, your mental health, and your relationships in a way that is beneficial for people around you and of course yourself. So let's talk about what are the strategies. Well, there are several strategies that I'm going to talk about as it relates to having clarity and purpose, because you have to have a clear idea of where you want to go in the new year, because there's an opportunity to reset your mind, right? That is truly, truly important. So you have to have clarity and you have to have a purpose. Why are you doing it? Why did you decide to say that I want to lose 40 pounds in the new year? What's, what's the decision behind that? right? Why, where's it coming from? You need to ask yourself those questions. Is it to wear that perfect dress because you have your high school reunion coming in June? Or is it because you want to get healthy and you want to be able to play with your, your children or even your grandchildren at, as you get older, right? So what is the purpose behind creating a new year's resolution, right? And then in addition to that, you have to have clarity, right? Those are the two premises that I do want to really set forth and, and, and really talk about is that you have to have clarity. What is it that you want? You cannot say that you want something, but don't have a clear idea on how to get there, right? So you definitely need clarity and you need purpose. So I need you to remember that my friends. Okay. All right, so we're going to talk about four points. All right, first and foremost, if you are setting an idea of what you want for the new year, you have to be realistic. Come on now, you have to be realistic and and also you have to identify what that looks like, okay? So in the business world, in the educational world, we call that SMART goals. You have to have SMART goals, which means that you have to be specific about your goals. You It has to also be measurable, right? You have to be able to say that, you know, I want to lose 20 pounds in, in, in six months, right? So you want to be able to measure that. It also has to do, it also has to be achievable. It has to be realistic. It has to be timely, right? So you really want to be able to set realistic goals. And let me just break that down, right? Saying to yourself, right? Because usually (laughs) we, we say it out loud, but we also say it to ourselves more importantly, right? It is important for you to have realistic goals. So you saying to yourself, I want to lose a hundred pounds by the ending of the next year, right? If you have a difficult time getting out of the bed and going to the gym at least once a week is a lot. If that's difficult for you, going to the gym and working out at least once to twice a week is difficult. To say that you're going to lose a hundred pounds and you have no desire to go to the gym, that's not realistic, right? But possibly saying, well, I want to lose 10 pounds and I'm going to increase my workout from one to two times to three to four times or something like that, right? So you don't want to put yourself in a place where you're going to fail. That's the reason why it's important to have SMART goals is for you to be able to say to yourself, you know what, I know what I often do. I'm going to do something better than I've done it, but I'm not going to go from zero to 100 because you're going to burn out quickly, right? So it's important to have SMART goals. The second is it is so important. I need you to understand this, my friends, that in the new year, you're going to prioritize you. Yes, yes, yes. It is not selfish for you to say, you know what? I'm prioritizing my self-care. I'm learning to say no to things that do not serve me, or I'm going to manage my time better 
Those are so important. And that's with every goal, every resolution is that you prioritize self-care, right? Not working yourself to death. Making self-care a priority by incorporating a balanced approach to physical, emotional, and mental well-being is the key to life. Because if you do not prioritize your self-care, you will be run down, fallen out, disgusted, and then look back at your life or look back at that year and say, oh, I can't wait for the next year. Stop doing that. Prioritize your self-care and make it a habit. It is not a selfish thing to say no. It is not selfish for you to say, you know what? I'm going to take a mental health day. (laughs) Absolutely. I'm going to prioritize my mental health. I'm going to prioritize prayer. I'm going to prioritize meditation and exercise and eating right. Those are things that should be staples of New Year's resolutions, my friends. Another is cultivating a growth mindset. It is so important for you to embrace challenges as opportunities. Life is going to be life in, my friends. Hear me when I say this, life is going to be lifing, but you have to look at those opportunities that seem very defeating as opportunities for you to grow and to learn Because this life, and I was listening to another podcast, I love podcasts because I'm a podcaster, right? And they talked about how it was important for you to not just look at this life as lilies of the field, but look at this life as an education, an ongoing classroom. Yes, there are going to be tests that you're going to take that you might fail, Okay, there'll be quizzes that you might take and say, I don't know the answer to, but I'm going to try, right? There are going to be times when things don't go your way, but then there are going to be so many other times when things do, in fact, go your way. And so it's so important for you to understand that life is about growth, learning from your past being in a place where you are moving forward and you are looking at every situation, not as a regret, but as an opportunity for growth. And you saying to yourself, you know what? It did not taste good going down. It was like some serious medicine that my mother would give me and I didn't like it, but it made me feel so much better. Yes, my friends, so much better. So you have to cultivate a growth mindset. That in itself will take you far, right? And it allows you to remain open to new experiences and perspectives. Do not be closed-minded. Do not want to see things only as you see them with your glasses that you have on, right? You know, I often tell my clients um, in my practice that we have to start changing those glasses because the glasses that you're wearing is, it might be full of mud. It might be so scratched up, right? It may be so broken. And you're seeing the world as you see through those glasses, broken, muddy, right? Foggy, right? But if I help you to understand that there are new glasses that you can put on, oh my goodness, the world would be a different place. The world would be a different place. So cultivating a growth mindset. Another, and which is my last point, yes, organizing and decluttering. How many of you, how many of you are decluttering your desk? How many of you are going into your closet and saying, okay, you know what? There's lots of stuff that I don't wear and it's just taking up so much room. I need to do something with that. How many of us are doing that? Hmm, 50%, 30%, 10%. We need those numbers to go up. We need those numbers to be in the 80, 90 percentile. Okay, right? Nothing is perfect. But it's important when you are walking into a new year, my friends, hear me when and hear me clearly. When you are walking into a new year, it is so imperative for you to begin to pave out 
a road for yourself. I must stay there. I'm going to, I might go a little, you know, metaphoric, right? With this, but it's so important for you to walk into a new year saying, I am just like, you know, when there's a snowstorm, right? And there's snow all over, but here come the plow trucks, right? They are plowing a new way for you. They are plowing a opportunity for you to walk on solid ground without slipping and sliding. And so it's important for you to be in a place carving out a clean slate, a clean place for you to walk through. And so decluttering is not just in the physical realm, but decluttering is also in the spiritual realm. For those who believe, it's important for you to know that whatever you want in this lifetime has to happen spiritually first in the spiritual realm before it takes precedence and shows up in the physical realm. That's how it works, right? It really does, right? Things don't just happen in the physical. It has to happen in the spiritual realm first. And so in order for you to spiritually be ready for what you physically want, I'm going to say that again, my friends, in order for you to be spiritually ready for what you physically want in this place, you have to get to a place where you are really letting go of things that do not serve you. You have to let go of things that do not serve you. You have to be in a place where you're forgiving. I had a conversation with a friend of mine. Actually, I I do a Bible study every Wednesday at nine o'clock. If you're interested, just send me a DM or send me a message, I can send you that information. I've been doing it for almost nine years, and it is so important for us to be in a place where we understand that we have power. And so one of the things that we were talking about was paving a clean slate for the new year. And It was said, and it came up, that unforgiveness clutters our spirit. My friends, I've talked about it on numerous occasions on other episodes. It's very much like a bunch of rocks tied on a rope, tied to your ankle, and as you are trying to swim to the top, it keeps you from getting to the top. It just brings you back down. And so it's so important, my friends, for you to understand that decluttering means also letting go of things that don't serve you and forgiving those who have hurt you. Oh, man, I know it's hard. I know it's hard, my friends, to really let go of those people um, who have hurt you and walk around with a grudgeful demeanor towards them but understand that it actually not hurt the person you're mad at because they're really living their life and doing their thing, right? It hurts you. It really hurts you. And you have to be in a place where you cannot allow things to prevent you from the blessings. Because remember, when the snow is plowed out and there's a clean path for you to walk, blessings, things can happen. So if your life is cluttered with anger and frustration and unforgiveness and regret, understand my friends, blessings cannot flow through a cluttered place. Blessings cannot flow through a cluttered place. I'm talking about it. Blessings cannot flow through a cluttered place. And so it's important for you to get organized in your thoughts. It's important for you to get organized in your spiritual walk. It's important for you to get organized on what it is that you want for your life in this new year. This new year can bring about so many amazing opportunities opportunities to meet people you would have never thought would have crossed your path if not for your path being cleared. And so my friends, as we approach a new year, I want you to be very much empowered for greatness, knowing that there is something at the end of this amazing life 
And while you travel down this life that we call life, you have to be in a place where you are ready to receive something that is going to take you to the next level. And what we know is a new year gives us opportunity to reset, reset, right? Do the things that we didn't do the the year before and thank God you have an opportunity to do so. So let's just, let's just really summarize, right? So what we know for sure is that it's important to have clarity and purpose when approaching a new year, clarity and purpose when approaching a new year. So here are my four strategies. It's important to have smart goals, right? Realistic goals, right? Um, attainable goals, timely goals. It's important to understand that goals are important. Know where you want to go, right? Don't set yourself up for failure. Do not set yourself for failure. Second is prioritizing self-care. It is important for you to put you first, I know, I know ladies, I know as mothers and wives and girlfriends, we tend to put everybody else in front of us, but it's important for you to say no more. (laughs) Yes, no more, right? We love our children. We love our families. We love our spouses. We love our parents. We love our friends. We love our neighbors. We love so many people, but oftentimes we're not loving ourselves. And loving you means being in a place where you say, I'm prioritizing self-care physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Okay. Third is cultivating a growth mindset. In a new year, it's so vital, my friend, so vital for you to embrace challenges, not as defeats, not as L's, right? Or losses, but as opportunities for learning and growing. I know life can be tough because I'm living it with you, but I have to remain open and I want you to remain open as well, knowing that all of those things that have come to hurt and kill and destroy you, God will turn it around and make it out for your good because you are divinely chosen and You are ready for the experience of life because it is your teacher. Okay. I'm feeling very (laughs) metaphoric this time, this time on my podcast. So please receive it. I was going to say, excuse it, but no, receive it. Fourth is organizing and decluttering. And I'm not just talking about organizing your closet or your pantry closet or your clothing closet or your desk. I'm talking about organizing your mind and your life so you can be in a place where you are open, where that path is clear, where blessings can flow because you deserve it. You deserve blessings. You deserve prosperity. You deserve, it is your birthright to have peace. It is your birthright to be happy. It is your birthright. And so claim it right now. And so with that said, you know, I give an empowerment assignment every time we have our podcast, a full-fledged podcast, not the meditation one, but the full-fledged podcast where we talk about everything that speaks to mental health and, and, and empowerment and not just empowerment, but healing. So what is your affirmation? Well, not affirmation, but your homework assignment for today is I want you to write these steps down and I want you to write down your goals for the new year. And how do they fall into any of these categories? Do they, do they check off the mark, right? So identify what you want as a new year's resolution and see if it falls into any of those categories or do they have those characteristics of it being a smart goal? Is, is it a character? Does it have the, the, the privilege of saying, yes, it's about also cultivating my growth mindset or prioritizing my self care. And also it's about decluttering. Like, does it fall into any of those categories? Now, if it falls into all four, oh my goodness, you are in for a treat in this new year. 
And so with that said, I am super excited to be before you because what I know for sure is that I am a change agent and so are you. If you make the decision to share, (laughs) share is caring, sharing is caring, but I've made a decision to help as many people as I can touch by the sound of my voice. And so if this resonated for you, I want you to hit that five-star button and leave a review and share it with someone who you believe could benefit. And so with that said, I am your, your empowerment strategist, the mental health expert, Natasha Paris, and I want you to be what? Empowered for greatness, because without greatness, there's no you, and without you, there's no greatness. Look forward to seeing you on the other side. Bye. If you are loving this content and our time together as we become empowered for greatness and you want to connect with me more, I would love for you to come and check out my self-empowerment scholars. It's my monthly empowerment sessions where we take all of the materials learned on the podcast and apply it and study it and take it to the next level. So join me over at Empower You, the letter U, to right? The number two dot com forward slash join, or you can text the word empower to 571-464-6511. That's text the word empower to 571-464-6511. Also, if you've ever gained an ounce of wisdom or the episode resonated with you, I simply ask that you do four things. The first is I want you to subscribe right now if you have not done so already. The second is I want you to hit that five-star button on your favorite platform. The third is I want to hear from you. I want to hear your feedback. I want to hear how it has resonated for you. In addition, the last, I want you to share this message with someone. It allows us to spread the message of empowerment to those who are desperately in need. So I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. And I want you to be what? Empowered for greatness. See you soon. Bye.